Hey everyone, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. This is now part two of my Space 1999 Round 2 Eagle Transporter build. So as you saw in the last video, we worked on the command module. There's still some exterior detailing we need to finish up there, but I'm actually going to go ahead and set this aside. And uh, what we're going to do here now is work on these pods. Now, the one thing that I did do since the last video is I actually went ahead and constructed these. I didn't really tape this uh, part. I was in the process of editing that video and so forth. So I went ahead and just uh, pushed through this section here. But there's really not much to tape. Um, honestly, you're just um, putting these two halves together and just installing the bars, just as you see on the diagram there. Um, I also assembled these uh, cages here, and these are, of course are the cages that surround the front and aft sections. And um, these actually glue in at an angle, just like you see in the instructions there. And in order to make sure that the angle was proper, what I did was I used uh, these sections here as a guide. So again, as the diagram shows, they come in at an angle here, and uh, the uh, plastic that this model is made from seems to set fairly quickly with cement. So you just kind of hold the pieces together, and uh, since they have to be at a certain angle, I would uh, glue them together and then place them onto this section here. And that way I just made sure I positioned them so that, uh, again, we have the proper orientation. And uh, so it's very, very straightforward to do that. And there are four cages that you need to work on. Then we had to work on these sections here. And these now go adjacent on either side here um, on the front and back sections. So I'm going to pick up here and show you real quickly before we move on to the pods one uh, thing that I did find that was helpful with putting these together. All right, so as you see, it comes in two halves, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble these and just glue them together. And as you're allowing it to dry, it's a good idea to put some clamps here all along, and that way you can have a nice tight seal. Okay, so the challenge that we have here now are there's a seam here. I'm not sure you can see it in this lighting but uh, there's a seam that runs along the uh, dome section here as well as on the back side. So uh, to sand something like this, it can be a little bit of a challenge, especially if you're going to use a file or just regular sandpaper because it is a curved surface. So I found this uh, instrument called a flexi file. This is what it looks like here. Uh, this is very simple. It's a uh, U-shaped uh, little bar here with these um, protrusions here to allow you to attach a band of sandpaper from one end to the other. And uh, so what this creates now is a tool that you can use to sand a curved surface because there's some give here. It will follow the contour of the surface and not leave a flat or a flattened area that's been sanded. Uh, so let me just show you how this works. Okay, so here we have our piece and our file ready to go. All you do is just run the sandpaper along the surface, and you can see there's that give there, and that allows us to follow the contour of the curved surface and not end up with a flattened area. So it's very, very easy to use, and the tape has this plastic backing to give it some support. Uh, the one thing I did notice, though, if you apply too much pressure, um, it will give here and it'll snap here. Uh, but that was just a mistake on my part. You don't really need to apply too much pressure when you're sanding here. And uh, it comes with different grits, so uh, as we did with some of our other seams, you can um, first start off with a coarser grit and then move up to finer ones as you polish the surface there. So again, it's called a flexi file. You can find it online pretty easily. I found it on eBay uh, fairly inexpensively, and you can, of course, find the refills as well. And here are the four pieces then that uh, are completed, and you can see that the seams are fairly well hidden. I didn't work too hard on this because these are going to be hidden underneath these cages, so uh, you know you don't spend, need to spend a ton of time with that. And uh, of course, this is the spine here completed. All right, so that's how that looks. And we're going to set all this aside now, as well as this section here, because I want to just uh, hold off on the wiring and stuff until the very end when we add the switch and so forth. Um, so we're going to now move on to the landing pads. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with the front port pod here. And the one thing that I did do, just to let you know, is um, I've already sprayed a very fine uh, application of primer. Um, I didn't spray it too heavy. Uh, you just don't need a heavy primer with this. Um, so just so you know, I haven't painted it just yet, but there is some primer on the surface already. Uh, so we're going to go ahead now and uh, attach these pieces, just like the instructions show us here, and uh, we'll move along from there.
we now have the assembled pod, and uh, you can see it pieces together fairly easily. Uh, once this is dry, then I'm going to actually go along the uh, seams here, just be sure there's no gaps or anything. If there are, we'll fill it in with some plastic putty. All right, and here you see the pods completed, and at least they're painted white anyway. Um, and I have them labeled, so you know which is which. And um, there weren't too many gaps uh, along the edges. There were a few here and there. And I just use this plastic putty here. What's nice about this, it comes with a uh, needle nose applicator. So it's uh, very simple to just squirt a little on or apply a little as you go along to um, fill in those gaps. Okay, guys, and as I was uh, getting ready to do some pastel work with the pods here, I uh, was looking at the box and I realized that these areas here are supposed to be black. Uh, they do provide decals, so you don't have to do it this way, but um, you know, my only thing about decals is there's always a potential they could chip. So rather than taking that chance, I'm just going to do it um, this way and just paint the areas black. So I have the areas masked off. We're going to um, do the same technique as we did with the uh, cone section or the command module. It's just going to drape it off here along each of these sections and then um, use our airbrush to uh, blacken them up here. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you when it's completed. Okay, and here we now have the pods, and uh, I know it's a little tedious to have to mask all this off. That is what is time-consuming, but uh, in the end it pays off. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and move on and start with some of the paneling. Okay, so what I'd like to do next is to work on these panel lines, or the shading here on the pods. You can see there's uh, light shades of gray here. Um, I've also uh, printed out some pictures. This is um, these are a couple examples of people who've already built the model uh, again off that uh, Facebook page, Space 1999 Props and Ships. And so I'm going to use these as a guide. Uh, and there's pictures here on the box, as you can tell. I've already shown you that. And here's another panel on the box showing a top view. And obviously, you can do this with paint, but I'm going to utilize pastels. This is something that I've done many times in the past, as you know and I think we can do a pretty decent job of replicating the pattern that you see here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So as you've seen me done many times in the past, it's a matter of taking these pastels. Now, pastels, again, are chalk-like um, pigments. Uh, they come in these sticks like that, and you can grind them on sandpaper. Uh, this one was made by Alpha Color. You can find these on Amazon pretty cheap. It's under 10 bucks. You can get a whole set like this, and this is just uh, black along with various shades of gray and down to uh, almost a white color there. So we're using a light gray and uh, the nice thing about pastels is you, you know all you need to do is mask off the area um, and it doesn't even have to be a tight seal but you just need to mask off what you're going to be applying a pastel to. Uh, you take the, your brush, lightly brush it on there, it doesn't take much, take it off and uh, then with each application now you just got to be sure as you're handling the model be careful um, and eventually we will seal it all with a uh, dull coat. So let's go ahead and uh, start applying some. Alright, and here we now have the pods decorated with pastels. And uh, again, not much to this technique. Uh, as you saw, it just matters taping off the areas and applying a mild coating of the pastels. And then when you take the tape away, what's left behind is the shaded area. So I've uh, coated these now with a matte finish, and um, I'm going to let them dry a little bit further. Next will be to apply some of the decals, and we'll move on to painting the landing gear. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the landing gear. Now one of the things I was really excited about with this kit was that I knew it was going to come with this feature that will allow us to duplicate the spring action that you saw in the Studio Miniatures. I remember watching this uh, show as a kid and I was just so fascinated by the amount of attention to detail that the model builders poured into uh, creating these miniatures because remember now they didn't obviously have CGI effects uh, so they had to do what they can to add a sense of realism. So when you saw the eagle land and settle the spring action would take place uh, and that of course would give the audience uh, an impression that this was a heavy ship. So I count 10 parts, and as you can see, there are two springs here. Uh, only one comes with the kit, and that's the shorter one. Uh, as I was following some of the bills on the Space 1999 Facebook page, um, there were some complaints about this shorter spring that it wasn't, uh, it was too tense. And uh, so uh, another one came recommended by a builder, and these were purchased off of eBay. Uh, you can see that they're longer than the other ones as well, but there is a difference in the amount of spring from one to the other. So um, this one tends to be a little softer. So hopefully that'll work out. Um, 
the spring actually doesn't go on until the very end. Uh, in fact, the landing gear you don't even have to put on until the final assembly here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and build the rest of the ship, and this will be the last step. Now one other thing here, as you're taking these parts off the tree, there is a fairly heavy connection uh, between these parts and the tree. Uh, so I would recommend just using an X-Acto knife. I started with my clippers here, but uh, you'll find a little less residual plastic if you just cut them free with your X-Acto knife. Now with parts 56 and 57 in particular, just make sure you're cutting along here. Uh, do not cut this ring off here. Because um, uh, as you look at it, um, if you're not careful, you'd be inclined just to snip it off here and, and have this flat area, but this has to stay there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so here is the assembled landing gear, and uh, as the instructions go here, um, I just started from bottom on up. So you glue the two halves together, you glue one side here, holding this in place, you bring the other piece in uh, from the other side, and you do not glue uh, this section here as well as this connection, because this elbow here has to be movable. Okay, so. Um, that's essentially how I put it together, and uh, this is what it looks like when it's done. Now the spring just goes on top. This slides into the hole inside here, and there's another um, connection on the inside there that this upper piece will glue into. And uh, so uh, just make sure as you're testing this out, because I wanted to test it, um, that don't, don't turn it back over to pull this all out because the spring will get stuck inside. Um, so let me show you, I'll uh, piece this together here temporarily and I'll show you how the spring works. Alright, so I have it temporarily in place here. Uh, let me just show you the spring action. Okay, so as the ship lands or you settle the ship down onto a surface, uh, you can see that it will bend here, like so. So it's pretty cool. Alright guys, well I'm going to go ahead and end this video here since it's getting a little long. Uh, next video we'll pick up with uh, building the engines. And of course if you have any questions, feel free to contact me as usual here at my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.